ramping up and just kind of like going to the next level of your business, that's very difficult. So um, scaling, which is where I'm, I would say that I'm at right now, like that's very difficult. So like, you know, for me, managing employees, like I always have great employees. I'm a cool boss, but I don't tell them anything to do. I just want to like hang out and just like, hey, if you want to, you can do that. <laughs> but, you know, so just developing leadership, I would say, personally, um, that's a challenge for me. Um, like, you know, because I'm a good solopreneur, but going from a solopreneur to a manager, um, that's a really big challenge for me. Um, so that's what I'm learning how to do, is just be a good leader. <laughs> Um, I agree completely that there's, you know, so many different challenges at every stage. Um, and I think though starting out, um, being a young female in Hollywood, it was difficult for people to take me seriously and to know that this is like really legit, I'm here to stay kind of thing. I would go to networking events and people would say, oh, are you an actress? <laughs> and I was like, no, no, not at all, you know, and that's just what they expected from a young woman. So um, I, you know, also dealt with some sexual harassment stuff and um, people just trying to put you in your place. And you just have to kind of say, fuck you, like, you're here to say, I'm doing this and like, you're not gonna stop me. So I think definitely just dealing with perception of the fact that you're a young woman and you need to take me seriously. I probably would echo both of theirs. Um, I think part of my low points is uh, actually even most recently I get um, mistaken for the intern. Um, so as a woman, you know, uh, you're expected to go grab the coffee, and I'm like, I'm actually not here to go to get your coffee. I'm here to either write you a check or you <laughs> either write me a check. Uh, <laughs> um, I was at an event this morning, and uh, literally, I think. A lot of people thought I was a student until I went up to tell them I might actually have money for you. So then they uh, changed their outlook. But uh, I think that's still something that I'm still tackling with. I'll go what all three of them say. So they're very smart. I very much listen to them. Um, <clears throat> same thing. You know, in the initial phases, it's always why should people take you seriously? You know, you're just getting started. You don't have a proof of concept to point to and say, well, I've helped all these people. Um, especially in the love world, the dating coaching world, at least where I'm coming from, it's very male-dominated. So I've had men say things to me like, a woman teaching a man how to meet women, that's like a woman teaching a man how to build muscles. So I've had a lot of those stereotypes to <laughs> quotable quotes for you today. Um, so, you know, a lot of that, I was telling some of these ladies before, it came down to a lot of self-worth conversations and recognizing my own value so that other people can see that too. And then once you have helped enough people, you can point to them and say, look, I help these people, and then there's your proof of concept. But you have to really find that from within first. Yeah. Yeah, great stuff, everyone. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so I'd say there are certainly a lot of lows. Um, well, when I was first starting, I had no idea how I was going to do dating full-time. Um, I called myself a baby entrepreneur because I really didn't know very much. Um, I started writing people's dating profiles just because I didn't want to do my math project at USC. And so I said, hey, if you do my data analytics project and help me with that, I'll do your dating profile. And it just started off as a very easygoing exchange. Then I realized, wait, I can actually make a business of this, but I didn't know how to do it yet. So I was working a full-time job in sales while building my dating business. But um, I guess like there are low points where you're just really, really tired trying to like make it happen because um, like what Megan said, you have to like build up that credibility and it comes from a lot of experiences and you just have to like hustle after them and no one's going to just hand them to you. So I was working full-time job at sales uh, in sales for the Irvine Company, which is as far away from where I'm at now as possible if anyone knows the Irvine Company, but um, I couldn't wear my nose ring. It was just a very corporate environment. Um, and so I'd actually have to like go, I'd run across the street on my lunch breaks and and set up my speed dating events that I was running as a side hustle. Um, or, I, or I'd run to the coffee shop on my lunch breaks and on all my days off. So I worked on weekends, I'd actually work on my two weekdays off. And I would work on my business. Um, and I just worked all the time. Um, so that's like, you know, it's hard when you're just working all the time and you're not sure where it's going. And then um, with matchmaking, it can be a struggle because even though you're doing a really great service, people are really complicated. And so even if you make what you think is a great match, it doesn't mean that people are gonna stay together. And so not letting that shape your value of your own service and what you're providing, which is providing quality dates, getting people out there, coaching them, um, 
and getting them accountable to their own dating desires, but not taking it personally if every couple you set up doesn't get married. But um, that certainly can be hard when you have a product that's not so understandable. I mean, you don't get that like excitement of I sold a vacuum cleaner and, and now it's sold, or I did this marketing report and now it's done. Like it's, it's human beings who are like have the most bullshit reasons for why they don't like someone and you have to see it <laughs> like firsthand all the time. And so everyone's like, matchmaking is so fun. And you're like, it is fun. And it's also really, really hard because humans have biases and you have to like see that. Um, and so I guess that's like some of the struggles sometimes like like taking care of yourself and you're taking care of so many other people and not absorbing some of their own bullshit and still trying to help them out. Because you'll have people who are like, oh, I won't want to date with that girl because I just don't date you know, anyone who's not white or whatever people's bullshit is and you have to kind of like figure out what your, your line is with making money take care of your client, but also trying to encourage other values that you believe in. Um, yeah, and so then I started a women empowerment community because I thought that would be really helpful for me to like be able to connect women in a way that matchmaking could be easier than romantic matchmaking. So that was a way for me to, to I guess, feel happier about something that was hard for me, which was matchmaking people is really hard um, romantically because hype matters and all this bullshit matters. If you're just matching up amazing women who just have the same values, then it reminds you that you are really good at what you do. Sometimes you just beat yourself up, I guess. So we'll go down the timeline of when you started your career to where you are now. So some of the things I'm, I'm hearing are proof of concept, proof of yourself, having that confidence to walk into a room and say, this is what I'm doing. So let's talk about when you first hit your stride in your career. What was that tipping point? Was there a defining moment? Did something happen? Um, do you remember that? <laughs> the one with the fried brain. <laughs> um, probably the tipping point, uh, perhaps for this sort of um, a stage in my life, is when I had um, opportunities where three different business opportunities just converged all at once. Um, they, like individuals who were, uh, I guess, uh, very uh, Established in their careers, and they were looking for my help to to move them along. Um, that was uh, that was a pretty big tipping point for me with respect to this because they saw my worth. Um, they were confident about my skills. Um, they were they believed in me more so than I did at, I think at that point in my career, uh, which really allowed me to kind of scale um, my ventures forward. Um, for me, I don't think that there was any one overnight moment. I think it was a lot of small little baby steps that made it, you know, more and more like, okay, each next level. Um, but one moment in particular is when I got my first executive producer credit um, because previously I had created some shows that didn't get the credit because, you know, for whatever reason, somebody else got it. <laughs> so when I finally got my first VP credit, that was really big for me. But I, in terms of actionable statements, I would say, I'm still cultivating an uh, attitude of satisfaction where I am right now. And because there's always that next level that you want to get to, and it's hard to, to be satisfied with every level, you know? And so, you know, I'm still reaching for new goals. And, you know, um, writing books is something that's new for me, and I'm establishing a new brand in that way. And so there's always that next thing that you want, and I think it's just important to be satisfied with every step along the way which is hard to do. <laughs> um, so I started my business at the height of the crash in 08. <laughs> so, and at the time, it was just kind of like an extra hustle until I find another job. So I was applying to like hundreds of jobs, literally, and no one would hire me. Like everyone was on hiring freezes. So I'm like, well, what am I gonna do? I'm just gonna like sit and starve. So while I collected my unemployment checks, I was just kind of like, I was in on the side, never thought it was a big, big, and then I would say that big aha moment that I can actually do it for real is when I had like a really large blogger who has like a million viewers saying like, oh, these are the best products I ever had, and I had like thousands of dollars like flooded into my PayPal account in like one day, I was like, oh God, like this is like, wow, people actually make a living doing this. <laughs> so um, I was like, you know what, I, I think I can do this, and honestly, I had no other choice. Like, who knows? Maybe if it wasn't, if I didn't start my business during the financial crash, maybe, and I just found a job, I don't know if I would have been an entrepreneur. But um, literally, I had a lot of time to cultivate my business because I really didn't have anything else going on. I was going to the gym all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I'm not anymore, but, you know. So, like, I had nothing else going on, so um, that was the only thing. So, that just kind of helped me cultivate 
cultivate my business and then I saw that like, wow, there is like a need for, you know, women want to be educated about their skin, they want to know about natural remedies, they like, you know, want to know about health and beauty and like how they intersect. Um, and I think like I have a lot of knowledge and, you know, maybe I could help people, you know, heal their skin. So um, that was a big aha moment when I just kind of like had, I was like, oh, you can make money doing this. <laughs> so um, that was like in 2000. And then when I started my boutique store, at first it was very slow. You know, I was absolutely miserable. And by oh, I didn't. I don't think any of us. I don't know if you guys have ever been miserable, but um, <laughs> in the beginning it was terrible. But um, yeah, it was terrible. But then you know, after a while, it was probably like maybe six months in, twelve months in. You know, you have to repeat customers, and they're just like, "This is my favorite store." And like you know, I was winning awards one year, and I'm like, "Okay, I'm doing the right." So, you know, you get those, you know, those indicators that you're on the right path, even though you're miserable at the time and it hurts, <laughs> but, you know, it kind of pushes you through. So, you guys have probably heard people say you're, you're always at the precipice of success, right, when you feel like quitting the most. <laughs> yeah, I've had to remind myself of that quote many times, because um, there were a lot of times when I was like, so much work, why am I even doing this? I'm losing sight of what the point was, right? Um, and in those moments, my like, defense mechanism was to seek outside work, um, which I was good at. I'm like, 